going live, and guess what? This Hangout is on air is live, and it's another Glass interview, and today I'm with Stephen, and Stephen, you're coming all the way in from... from San Francisco. San Francisco, fantastic. Uh, and everywhere I look on the web, Stephen, I find examples of your work, um, your discussions with other people, and your personal website at extremis.com, which has a statement front and centre in there that says, my obsession, wearable computing. And for those that, that don't even know who you are, uh, or a little, bit, little about who you are, uh, how did you get into wearable computing? Well, uh, just like, like uh, you were saying, my website says this is basically a personal obsession of mine. Um, I, I guess I would have to admit that this kind of started back when I was a kid. And all of the superheroes are, are wearable computing guys, right? Like we got Batman, Iron Man, even Spider-Man's got this wearable computing, wearable technology at least. Um, so I've been obsessed with it for a long time. Um, and basically through the years, until Google Glass came out, I was really into smart watches. Um, mm. I personally disagree with people who think that the smartphone killed the watch. I saw the smartphone as a uh, kind of an intermediary until computers were small enough to be on a watch. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of like going back in time to when we wore pocket watches. Uh, you know, I don't want to wear a pocket watch like I'm in the 1800s or whenever that was. Uh, I'd much rather have my watch on my wrist. So I've been really uh, following. Interestingly enough, I guess uh, mainly out of Asia, Japan and China have had smartwatches for quite some time, and I was mm. buying a lot of those, uh, testing them out. Mm. They weren't quite uh, compatible with a lot of the American cell phone networks, but I've uh, been playing around with them for quite some years. And Stephen, in, in, one of, in your site or in another uh, site that you're administrating there, livingthroughglass.com, driving with Google Glass, you, you state that not only is it safe to drive with glass, but it's safer than driving without. Uh, for those that have got no idea actually what it's like to drive with glass at all, that would be the average Australian, who will be told in the first case that it's illegal to drive glass. What do you think about the laws to ban glass outright? Well, I really worry about those laws because, um, well, as you can see maybe now, my glass is just Velcroed to my, my own frames. I'm kind of in transition right now, waiting to get uh, new lenses put into the new Google Glass frames. Um, but once I have Google's frames with my lenses in there, I'm not going to be able to remove my glass. It's going to be a permanent part of my glasses that I'm required to drive with. Mm. So it's a little bit of an awkward law because I'm required to drive with my glasses, but possibly not allowed to drive with glass. This is one unit. Um, so it's, it's going to be a little bit difficult uh, to navigate for the governments to kind of figure out what's right and what's wrong. As we saw with uh, Cecilia Abade's uh, court case, basically California has now said it's legal. They can't prove or disprove that she had her glass active at the time, right? So as you can see, my glass, it's not obstructing my vision. It's a, supposed to be above your, your line of view. Um, and so if my glass is off, it's deactivated, there's no reason for it to uh, interfere with my driving. But what I was saying with, uh, with a lot of my posts or with the blog post that you're talking about is that I believe that because it's not interfering with my vision, um, but then it is actually augmenting my vision and giving me navigation um, and giving me some, some sort of assistance, I think that it's even safer than driving without glass. Um, a few of the applications are uh, a native application, straight navigation. Uh, using Google Glass for navigation is very similar to glancing in the rear view mirror. Um, you know, it's, it's not in, in front of your vision. But every time I look up and to the right, as if I was looking behind me, I could see the, the map of where I need to turn. Um, mm. So another in, in part essence, of, of glass that a lot of people don't. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. 
That's well, just the delay, the delay between here and here. Oh, and a little bit of a lag. Okay. <laughs> um, but another piece of glass that a lot of people don't know about is the phone conduction speaker. Right on the back of the glass, I can hear navigation uh, instructions provided to me without the display ever coming on. So at that point, I'm just hearing a Google voice in my head that says, turn right or turn left. Um, it's, it's very easy to drive that way, and it's not in any way impacting um, anything. It is truly a hands-free device. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also a, a Google Glass application um, called Drive Safe with Glass. And uh, this will basically notify me every time my head slowly falls, maybe as I'm passing out at the driving wheel. Um, it will notify me, it will flash in my face, and it will give me directions directly to uh, the rest stop where I can take a nap and, and get ready to drive again. Wow. That's, 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 thank you for that clarification, because there's three or four things there that I had no idea existed within the device itself, so thank you very much. Um, Stephen, let me sort of return back to that core question again around wearable technology or wearable computing. What does it mean to you? Like, how important is it to you? I think wearable computing is... Uh, I, I believe computers will continue to get smaller, um, and so we're not going to just want to put them on our desk anymore. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a natural progression of a computer to get smaller and to be more human in that sense, um, because as it gets smaller, uh, we can put it in new places. I personally believe that sitting in front of a desk all day, every day, is unhealthy. It's not really what people want to do. I can be just as efficient as mm -hmm. if I were sitting in front of my desk, but I can be moving around and I can I can be out and about in the in the city, and, and uh, so I think it's going to be very very crucial for efficiency of workers, but it will also allow people to be much more human again, and be real people rather than people hunched over the computer. Mm -hmm. That's that's an interesting observation. So Stephen. I see in some way that, as you're talking about applications here, that you're connected in some way with the LinksFit team. And, and what other applications do you see Glass lending itself to? As in, what other occupations uh, you know, are a natural fit for a Glass wearer? Sure. So, yes, absolutely. Um, good friends with Noble Ackerson um, and, and the LinksFit team. I think LinksFit is a amazing application um, because it's utilizing all of the sensors of glass mm. and it's really it's really showing what glass could possibly be if, if we do things right with the, with the platform um, I was uh, involved in a hackathon back in August and we built a Basically, a, a simple web-based game. When you have an exterior that's attached to your body, it's much more powerful than simply one that's in your pocket, right? Uh, a smartphone accelerometer lets it do things like uh, know if it's portrait or if it's in landscape view. But when an acceler accelerometer is on your head, it knows if you're jumping, if you're running, um, you know, if you're walking. It knows if you're doing squats. Uh, so you can actually build applications that enhance human activities. Mm. Uh, really pushing Google Glass in the medical industry. And I think it's going to be very... ...industry. Um, but as there are just so many different applications for the device. Um, one real Absolutely. powerful uh, application is another Google service called Google. If you can see what an expert is doing first, you can learn quite a bit from someone who may be on the other side of the world. 
Mm. Or even live and connected to the person on the other side of the world. S Stephen, glass is likely to have an impact on exactly. on you know both private and public spaces, True. and um, you know and, and in places where people aren't or you know averse to being recorded, or you know, is do you think glass is going to be capable, as Professor Steve Mann would have us believe, in putting power back into the uh, into the wearer's hand, so to speak, that surveillance idea. Absolutely. Um, there have been a few incidents where glass explorers have been able to record interactions between people and the police. Um, you know, so as we see, like the police department. Uh, cameras on their cars, uh, organizations, now people can actually record it as well. So it is absolutely putting power back into the people's hands. Um, I, I think it's going to be extremely powerful. Mm. Mm. There are a few situations that take glass off. So I'm essentially wearing glass in the bathroom as, well as anything else being completely straightforward but I don't think it's awkward because you're you're not looking at other people you're dealing with yourself and you can tell when I'm recording you and you can tell when I'm not right I mean when I light the glass there's also significant battery issues so if we're to try to record a video, the battery is going to run out in about a half an hour. So I'm not mm -hmm. going to be recording videos everywhere I go. I'm going to select the right time for me and for maybe for my family when I want to record. Sure, Stephen. I can think of at least a hundred ways glass could be used in you know in a workplace setting. Uh, but I can also think of about a hundred things that my fellow employees might say if I was to begin wearing glass in in my meetings now or in my interactions in a, in an academic context. How how do you get around that in your workplace or you know in public or around your family indeed? Sure. So uh, I would say a few of my coworkers were a little bit nervous about me recording them, um, about me having a camera in their face all the time, mm -hmm. and they were able to talk to me about it. Um, I think a lot of it was about education, and as soon as they realized what the device does, the camera is only one piece, mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be the piece that people are worried about because there's so much more to the device. Mm -hmm. I personally wouldn't mind if they removed the camera completely. I, th I think that glass is very powerful as a head-mounted display in a computer. The camera is just one small thing that is not that important to me personally. Mm. Now, my wife has been a little bit upset with glass because she thinks that it's not a very social device. I'm the only one that can see what's going on. It's very difficult to share what I'm seeing. Um, mm. like, And she can see the, the, whatever I'm looking at. But with glass, it's all me, and it's just me that's viewing it. As we talked about uh, Link's Fit, um, that team is actually doing some great work connecting Google Glass to the Chromecast. And that is awesome. That will really bring it to the next mm. level. When I can look at something on my glass and I can cast it to the big screen in the room and share it with everybody, I think that really changes it in a workplace environment, and it makes it a much more social device. Mm, 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 that's that's a, a good connection. And it's going to change the yeah. Stephen, uh, you're you know you're you're a young, fit, and hip and connected person. Um, can you see any point in grandmothers and grandfathers wearing glass or 
this is just not a demographic or a generation specific technological innovation. It's you know, is this broad ranging? I think it's for everyone. Um, I think that glass is so human and so natural that it's actually easier to use than a smartphone. Um, I would say that my mom sometimes maybe doesn't like using her cell phone because she doesn't know all of the icons. She doesn't know exactly what everything does. But Google Glass is And she would be taking a lot of amazing photos and videos of her grandchildren and absolutely loving Google Glass very quickly. Mm -hmm. So there's many different cultures that have differing rules around what's permissible when it comes to capturing either images, audio, or video of a person. In, in Australia, particularly, we've got very differing accept, you know, acceptance rules around uh, that type of activity, which compare, compared to the US, is very different. What's the likely impact of glass in that regard here in Australia, do you think? Are we going to witness, you know, assaults or law enforcement overload or social segregation of glass wearers? Where do you, what, do you, what do you think is going to happen? Sure. I would say that uh, that's probably the reason, or one of the reasons, why Google is focusing on the US uh, for the Explorer group. Um, maybe they don't want to have to deal with all of the government issues while they're focused on developing the technology itself. Mm. I'm sure there are many other reasons, but that's probably one. But I believe we are now seeing a lot of law enforcement agencies starting to utilize glass. Um, mm. So there are just so many ways that it can connect law enforcement and the public, and it can be a natural unification of the people. It doesn't have to be a segmentation. It doesn't have to separate people at all. I think right now with the GLASS program, the price <laughs> is a segmentation, maybe. Uh, because it's so expensive, it may stop certain people from, from buying GLASS. But I can't imagine that a consumer version will be as expensive. One thing is uh, Google has been replacing many, many broken glasses. Um, so that's probably why it's so expensive. If I were to break mine right now, I could send it in to them, explain to them what happened, so hopefully they'll fix it for the next generation. But uh, they'll replace it and send me a new one. So. It's going to be cheaper. It, it will be more widely available. And I think it will unite people. Mm. Um, I believe that there are a lot of ways that they can slightly modify glass to make it fit all of the different uh, government's rules about recording video. There have been some uh, ideas of putting uh, an LED somewhere on the camera to show that the camera is active. Mm. Um, there's there are some explorers that have 3D printed something that actually will be a big sign on top that lights up and says, I'm on air. I'm recording. So there are ways to show that you're recording. If it's required, um, I'm sure Google is ready to make those adjustments. Absolutely. Stephen, the Glass Explorers community is growing rapidly, and you're part of that. And but what sense do you think? Uh, th that it's going to change in any respect? I mean, is it likely to grow into some sort of larger organization in its own right, or is it going to be fundamentally a grassroots connection between people who are principally interested in this technology? The Glass Explorers community is the best part of being an explorer. Um, I've met so many amazing people uh, I would say that is the biggest value of being a glass explorer, is all of the amazing people, extremely creative and amazingly intelligent people. Um, it's just been really, really awesome to be a part of the community. 
I absolutely hope that, that the community continues to grow. I, was a, I wasn't an original Glass Explorer, the, uh, the developers who got it uh, at the very beginning, but I was an If I Had Glass Explorer, part of the social media campaign, and I got Glass, um, I believe it was uh, June or July of last year. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've now had invites. We all sent out it, like maybe three or six invites, uh, and so the community is growing exponentially. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen the community change as more and more people have come, and maybe the same questions get asked over and over again. So hopefully we can organize the community so that we can all learn from each other, and it's a growing evolution. Um, mm. But it's really awesome to still have that community, and uh, I hope that it stays as a tight knit group. Mm. Uh, Stephen, humanity is always shifting and changing, and you know it's accommodating for new technologies. And but, do you think that glass is a fad, or do you think it's going to have a significant, long-lasting impact on humanity? Well, I believe that, uh, well, I think Microsoft and Samsung have both come out and said they're interested in developing wearable glasses, wearable technology in the form of glasses. Um, I don't know if Apple is. Maybe they're not as transparent. But I'm sure there will be a lot of different com uh, competitors. So with that being said, there's going to be a whole market of products um, and with that, I don't think that it's going to end. I think it's going to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Google has already talked about a, a contact lens, a smart contact lens that can record your uh, glucose levels if you're a diabetic. Mm. And uh, so they're already getting smaller and smaller technologies in more and more wearable forms. So I think that the the wearable technology is the future, and it's it's only going to explode from here. Mm. Stephen, it's a pleasure talking with you because uh, you've got a, a really you know quite a profound uh, connection with this space, and from from you know the outpourings of things I see on the web from you, very connected with the whole community, and 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 holding that in high regard. It's it's a pleasure talking with you. I really appreciate you joining me here with the Glass interviews, and um, I look forward to uh, your connections further with people you think that should be, uh, uh, so to speak, nominated or or part of this discussion. So thank you very much for connecting with me today. Absolutely. Thank you very much. It's been great talking to thank you. Thank you. And I'll definitely send names of some other explorers. Thank Fantastic. you very much for having me. No problem at all.